My name is Julie Pearson Little Thunder. Today is Friday, January 25th, 2013, and I'm interviewing Lena Blackbird as part of the Oklahoma Native Artist Project, sponsored by the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. We're at Miss Blackbird's home um, in Tahlequah. Lena, you've been making Cherokee baskets for many years and specializing, I think, in double-walled baskets. Mm -hmm. yes. You've also been an exhibitor with the Jalagi Village mm -hmm. uh, at the museum, and your baskets have been featured in several books. You've taught a lot of people how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. Where were you born and where did you grow up? I just grew up around here in Turkey, Turkey County, in Rockford. Uh huh. Rockford. <laughs> what did your folks do for a living? Uh, really, no, no jobs, but just I, I guess it was just call them farmers or laborers or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just making. Making it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, did you have your uh, grandparents what, um, on both sides? Mm, no. I, <clears throat> I really didn't know my, on my dad's side, uh, the grandparent. I didn't really know him because <clears throat> he were he was gone, and I had he had gotten separated from the family a long time ago, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So we really didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Were and, were your other and the mother's side? He was he was around, but we really didn't stay close touch with him either. He he mm -hmm. lived around Willing Willing, Oklahoma. And Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd come to visit, but that was about all, mm -hmm. the real grandparent. Mm -hmm. What are your earliest memories of seeing artwork, even sewing or painting or baskets? Well, <clears throat> I've done sewing since, since um, I guess I really started sewing when we would go to church and help our, our mother sew, sew at the church, church on Wednesdays. Was it quilting or? Uh, quilt, quilting. We would get <coughs> quilt, quilt tops from other, from whoever wanted to have their quilt there quilted. And we would make a little money for their church for missions, for missions work. And that's where I learned how to. So, yeah. did you like it? What did you like about it? Mm -hmm. Well, when I was little, I guess I did, I was thought I was really just made to do it. I didn't. I'd rather went out and be playing somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They were. Our parents were pretty strict. They they wanted us to learn to learn things. And probably it it uh, taught you patience, and maybe you were working with your hands, doing mm -hmm. fine work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just using a needle and a thimble, we would, we would sew this, those quilts and just uh, put them on frames, and we would just sit around the sit around the quilt and sew. <laughs> Women would just be laughing and talking and just talking about things and having fun, fun too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> good, good visiting time. Um, did you like to draw, or were there any other kinds of? No, that's one thing I never, never did. <laughs> never got interested in drawing or anything. seem to it didn't seem to be too interesting to me <laughs> <laughs> where did you go to school you went to 
this little place at Rocky Ford. Um, it's, it's still standing there, but it's about, just about half gone. It's a, it was a brick house, a brick house, and it's about half, half gone, and that's where I went till I, till I finished in the eighth grade. And, and what, it, was, what was it like for you going to school? There, there was a, very many kids going at that time. Because we had to walk, there were no buses or anything to, to catch right by the door, and and in winter time we'd have to walk, we'd have to bundle up if we had enough clothes. <laughs> <laughs> we'd bundle up and go to school, and sometimes there were just about four, four students come, mm. and and we were kind of pleased. When there were just a few of us there, that we got a treat, we got an apple or an orange. <laughs> <laughs> um, you grew up with Cherokee as your first language. Yes. Was school an adjustment? Was it hard to adjust to? Do the school? Yeah, you in mean English. When it first started. Mm hmm I guess it was. I guess I really didn't didn't want to go. <laughs> I think my mother made me go. And some, sometimes later, <clears throat> I would, uh, I really didn't like to go because I, I would be, I would be crying sometimes not wanting to go. <laughs> but she made me, yeah, she made me go. At least I got that far. <laughs> Oh, and you like to write, Lisa says. You... Mm -hmm. I like to write. I, I like to. I like to read. I, I used to like to read poems, and I would. I've got few that I've written, written, and, but my hands now are shaky, and I can't hardly write good anymore. So I just don't do much. <laughs> Did you do any um, artwork in school that you remember or make any things, any crafts in school? I don't remember making, making just little special things or specific things. And just, just doodling, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Little art projects. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. like those or not too yeah. much? Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess that's what we were told to do at that at that time. So we, we did it. <laughs> so what happened after you finished school? Well, I, was, mm, I think I started. I tried to go to Oaks High School, but I but I didn't finish finish even the first the first year. So so I just went that far. I knew and I, 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 I that's as far as I went in school. And I, what were the reasons that you? Um, I guess uh, we had to. We did. Do, they had to do a lot of things to help, to help the family and do housework and, and just doing things to help. Because we lived on a farm and we had to do a lot of things. And and going to school was not part part of what I like to do. <laughs> <laughs> and were you the oldest? No. <clears throat> No, uh, there was eight of us in the family, and I was the what, sixth, sixth one. I think. Okay, so you were needed to help around home. When did you learn basket making? Um, I. Some people say they they learned it from their grandmother or their mother or. 
uh, that they've been doing them for a long, long time. But for me, I didn't start that far back. I just uh, started working at the village at the Heritage Center. And the other ladies that uh, taught me, taught me then, that, that's when I got interested in the basket making, um, among other things that we did in the village. And, and oh, that's really interesting. So was it in the 80s when you started working at the, mm -hmm. the village? I think it was. I think it was in the 80s. I think I, I started working there in 86 or somewhere around there, and just almost that. Immediately after that, I learned how to make baskets. Because you're, what was it like working in the village? It was, it, it made you think, it made you think about how, how Indians and how people lived, how they lived back then, and most of all, how they, how they could have made it. <laughs> <laughs> how to, how to, didn't have any store-bought things or didn't go to the store to buy this and that. And a lot, a lot of things came from the, from the woods and, and greens and stuff like that, that, that they would gather to eat and the fruit, fruit. When when we were growing up, it was it was a lot better, but by, by then, but but that's what I used to think about. I used to think about how they lived back then, long time ago. And and I guess everybody is doing some kind of activity in the village, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody you had to have a chore to do, mm -hmm. but you were attracted to the basket making. Mm -hmm. Yes, I I was. Uh, <coughs> they had a. They had um, food uh, they made out of hickory nuts from the woods, mm -hmm. and they made soup out of it, and I was the one that demonstrated how to make it. That's you, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know how now. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All that practice. I've never forgotten how to make it. Now she told me how. <laughs> That's, that was the demonstration I did when the tourists came by to show them how it was done and what all they had to eat and what all and where they got it and stuff like that. So when you ask some of the ladies over there to, to teach you to make baskets, mm -hmm. um, were you doing that in the course of the demonstration? Did you get to be by them or did you do uh, that afterwards? No, they were... The tourist was kind of like in between. Um, the tourist would go by and there'd be a, a little while before another tourist came by. Uh, a group, a group came by, and and in between, that's what we did. We we made <laughs> baskets. And did you take to it right away? Pretty much, but it took a little while and. I think my first basket would look like would look like a cone. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't shape it. I mean make it flat flat the way it used the way it starts out till later when I learned how to do it. <laughs> and were you working with um what material were you working with at the village when you were learning how to make baskets? Um, we you we used the uh, Mostly the commercial read mm -hmm. then to to practice on to learn to learn on and then mm -hmm. if if we could get the natural read from well we might get it from somebody that would get it for us or because uh, I I didn't get it out go out and get it myself too much. Mm -hmm. but I just used to get it from someone mm -hmm. that did, that mm -hmm. liked to do that. Right. So when did you um, think, I, 
I really have the hang of this. I want to I want to see if I can sell these or show these. How many years was it? What was the question? How many years before you started trying to sell your baskets? Oh, almost immediately they they were so they stopped selling. That's that's, uh, that's what I remember about them. They 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 didn't. I guess they liked them. I guess. <laughs> uh huh. Were you were you started? Did you start off with certain designs? What what designs did you start off with? Um, when we were learning how mm -hmm. to do it, we would just mostly use the plane without using color in it till later when we got a little better we started using color color on them. And were they they were open baskets, um, so double they, wall? Yeah, they were double wall baskets and they were all they were open mostly at the beginning, mm -hmm. but, but later you learned how to make the lid. To put the lid on the top and then make a little a little knob on top where you could pick it up and mm -hmm. pick up the lid and open it. <laughs> were there a lot of basket makers at the time that you were learning? Or just a there few? There were several but not not a not a whole lot were there at at that time. I know. My sister-in-law was there. She had been doing it for quite a while. And then the other ladies, Nadine was there when, mm. I, when I was, and she she would help me with it. And, and it's another old lady, Diane. I forget her last name, Diane. I forget her last name. No, I'm sorry. But she, she was older than us, and she had been doing that for a long time. Uh huh. So tell us about your first, um, the first time you won an award for your baskets. Um, we went to, I. Well, uh, somebody encouraged me to, to enter, to enter the basket that I had made and. And I took it to to the um, art under the oaks in Muskogee, mm -hmm. and I it was a honeysuckle basket with a lid, and had I think little had little decorations, acorns on it or something like that, and I was. I was surprised. I was happy. And, <laughs> and somebody else entered, entered at the same time, and and then we were all outside, and they, when they were calling our names, what we had won, and, <laughs> and, and when they got to the basketry, they they called a, they called somebody else's name. And I thought, oh, oh, I got disappointed. <laughs> I got disappointed, and somebody next to me said, oh, no, you, you, you didn't call your name. And, and and the next name they called, they said, and the best the best of the show is Lena Blackbird. <laughs> so I said, so I came alive again. <laughs> oh, that must and, have and felt. I, and I had won the best of show award. Oh, the Best of Show Award. Mm -hmm. Wow, mm -hmm. that's very impressive. That's the first uh, time I had entered the basket. Uh huh. So it had little acorns on top. Was it plain color? Did it have any designs on it too, mm -hmm. or just? I think we were using color mm -hmm. color then. Mm -hmm. we started color using color then, and and. Uh, uh, we used a lot of the commercial, commercial um, color, but mm -hmm. but but we used the, a lot of the other natural natural color, like uh, like uh, I 
I'm getting blank. <laughs> Go ahead. This blood root. This blood is root. Lisa blood root. That goes down mm -hmm. and goes out in the woods. Walnut. And walnut. Okay. Yeah, walnut. We mostly used walnut and blood root at that time. At that time. So mm -hmm. that would give you some reds and purples. Uh, yeah, it was, browns. Uh, the blood root was mostly orange, kind of like an orange color. Mm -hmm. Not really red, but orange. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the walnut is kind of light, light brown, or sometimes it, it would be dark, darker mm -hmm. if you used more, more walnuts in it or that. We also can, you can also use the holes in, in it to make a color. So was that your first time going to the Art Under the Oaks show? Mm -hmm. in that was, I think that was the first time I started going to that show. So right. I kept going. Right, <laughs> so, yes. <and> so <laughs> that was a good start. <laughs> yeah. What were some other shows that you liked to do? We, um, the, Where, where, where I want, where I want something is that yeah, question? or that you would show your work at. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, mostly every year we we went to the Heritage Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, mostly every every year I would run, I would win first place, which made me happy. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> Must have. <laughs> I thought, I thought they, like, they, like, they like my work. They like yeah. My yeah. <laughs> Was that during Cherokee holidays when the Cher when the Heritage um, Center had their show, or was it the Trail of Tears show? The Trail of Tears. Okay. And, and, and um, when you were winning each year at the Trail of Tears show too, that that was when that was really a big national show. They got entries. Mm -hmm. from all over the country during that time. Mm -hmm. Now your sister makes baskets too, right? Uh -huh. Yeah, she does. Did she, she, did she learn at about the same time as you? or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think probably about the same time, maybe a little, maybe a little later. A little when later. She started, uh, when she started entering her baskets. Who were some basket makers that you um, admired during that time? You were winning a lot of shows, but were there a couple of people whose work you really thought was also good? At that time, uh, there weren't that many mm. basket makers uh, like they are now. There's a lot of basket makers nowadays. Yeah. And, and, and I, I guess the one that I would look up to that helped me the most would be my sister-in-law. That she, she, mm. cause she was uh, making baskets before, way before I, I was, and, and she was good. Did you ever get a chance to go to Cherokee, North Carolina? Yes, we've been there. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of going to going back to. Homeland. Mm. Um, did you go with your family, your husband and kids, or? No, the first time we went, we, the village, got together and raised some money, and we went. We got to go. That's wonderful. Yes. What was that like? It was. It was just like. Uh, get, get to thinking. Um, do, that that was your home. Your home. Mm. <laughs> now, now I'm going to cry. <coughs> and <coughs> you would just think that's where you came from. Your ancestors came from. Mm -hmm. And you were. And you were standing on the soil, 
ancestors lived. Did you? Um, and this, yes, it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. Did you get to talk to a, any basket makers over there? Uh, yes, I did. I talked. I talked to some <coughs> basket makers, but they used a lot of the the flat reed instead of okay. the kind that we used right. over here. <coughs> And they, and they would, uh, in, the, in the old days, they would, they make their own flat, flat reed from, from trees up. Mm -hmm. and they would, in the old days, way before my time, in the way. <coughs> And they were pretty, but uh, I think these are uh, made from honeysuckle and and commercial leader <laughs> are pretty, prettier are, to are me. prettier to you, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And they use different yeah. kind of splits, didn't they? What do you use a? Do you have to have a frame for that honeysuckle? Or I don't know what you call it, but for the structure that the honeysuckle goes around, do you use a different kind of material for that? You mean before you used to make baskets with it? Yeah, for for something to hold up because the honeysuckle's so flexible. Oh uh, no, we didn't use anything to okay to to, to like you said to make it mm -hmm. like a pattern, like going mm -hmm. around and around with mm -hmm. it. We just used our mad imagination and you know, our own hands and. And that reed, it has to be, has, when you gather it, it has to be boiled for maybe three, three hours to really get get it soft enough to just to strip, get, get it one by one, to strip it with your hands and get, oh, them, get them clean. For the reed. Uh, for uh -huh. the reed. So you mentioned you, you only made a few of the reed baskets, is that yeah, right? The, the, what did I say? <laughs> buck brush. The I mean, buck they brush. Call it buck brush. Okay. And it's a lot. It's a lot tougher than the than the honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's why I guess that's why they, they weren't so many honey uh, buck brushes. Buck made. brush. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to work with in uh, a way. It's harder to work with, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the the reed is bigger and tougher. Mm. It's, it's it's a tougher reed. Did you enter the couple of buck brush baskets that you made? Did you enter those in mm. shows? I don't think I I ever entered entered one, but. But people liked them because they were diff different. Because they were different. So, so they bought them. They sold them. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have to charge a little more because it was tough to work with? Yes, you had to charge a little more for the the natural reed that you use. Mm. That you go out and gather yourself. Right. You have to fix it up. And, and there's a lot of work to it. And... Some people don't realize how, how much work there is to it, but mm. there is. There is a lot of work to it. Right. Work to it. Was there, um, well, let's start with, I know that you won, like in 2005, you won in the contemporary basket category. Mm -hmm. You had a piece called Indian Summer, I read. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if you could um, explain that basket to us, first of all, what it looked like. The, see, whenever we 
finish the basket and was going to enter it. I thought they pref preferred to, for it to have a title. Mm. But nowadays they, they, they enter them and some of them don't have no titles to them. So I guess it ma mattered more then than it does now. But oh, that's interesting. Mm. So you did wood title quite a few of your uh -huh. baskets because that was what people did. Uh -huh. We usually, and then, then we would think and think what, <laughs> what, we, could call it, what we could call it. And did you help each other with ideas? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So I noticed, you know, you've talked about um, you know, you say we went to a show, et cetera. Did you travel with other basket makers quite a bit then? The other uh, women, other women who were selling. We didn't go to. <coughs> we didn't go too far. Maybe. <coughs> maybe like. Uh, we went to Tulsa quite a, quite a bit. With the, them oh. shows over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. At um, galleries or. At the fairgrounds or at the uh, craft craft shows is what we mm -hmm. would, would call it. Tulsa yeah. Indian Arts Festival mm -hmm. was that going on? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you, would you have a booth together or did mm -hmm. you have your own booth? I like the rest of the other basket makers. Mm -hmm. No, each one of us would have our own booths. Mm -hmm. booths and but Tulsa was a good market for your uh -huh. baskets. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. How would you describe the difference between um, a traditional basket and a contemporary basket? How could you tell? The natural lead, uh, when it's stripped, it's got little bitty, little bitty, it's not smooth all the way around like the, this commercial lead oh, is. Okay. It's got little bitty, yeah, I would just say bumps, I guess, uh, on the honeysuckle when you, after it's cleaned up. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Roots. And, and roots that are uh, sticking. You can let them stick out to, to, make, to make sure they know it's a natural. Oh. And we used to cut all them roots off before, but, but then we started uh, leaving them on because uh, they look more natural and, mm -hmm. and more and just look more and they could tell that it was a natural reed and, and while well, this was a smooth all the way around mm -hmm. didn't have nothing on them just commercial Were you one of the first who kind of started putting acorns on top of your baskets? Um, I just thought a little decoration from the from the woods would would look would look different or better or something. <laughs> so we stood, so we started using ac acorns and, and it caught on everybody. <laughs> Everybody yeah, liked everybody, the idea. Everybody caught on with it. <laughs> <laughs> what was your um, <coughs> either most favorite or maybe the thing you didn't like about shows when you were doing shows? What did you enjoy or what didn't you enjoy? Uh, just it seemed like uh, it was a, in, enjoyable to meet people, different people, and talk to people, uh, and that, and that, how they would admire your work, and that made you feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know about what I didn't like. I don't. I just like to go. I just always like to go to and enjoy, enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. And did your family come to shows with you, the kids and you? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I did. It's, 
for a while I, I went by myself, but I set up by myself. And, mm -hmm. um, and but mostly my sister or my sister in law or brother would be next, next sitting next to me with their own crafts mm. crafts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then and later and later on Lisa started getting interested in it. So, uh -huh. she, so she could so she went with me and started going with me and, and when I got crippled and she's the one that usually takes me around everywhere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you take um did you give any workshops in making baskets? No. Well, uh, but I think they were. I didn't go to very many uh, places where I demonstrated, but I know we went, I went to a couple of places that I know where they got to. They asked you if you could go and to this place and demonstrate mm -hmm. making make baskets and. I know I've been to maybe two or three, not very many. Where were they? Where? Uh -huh. I think uh, um, Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow was one, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and let's see, Stillwell, somewhere in Stillwell, I don't know just where it was. I'm forgetful, and I can't, I can't remember <laughs> the, last, the other places. Well, those are good. Is there a type of basket that you that you wanted to learn how to make that you never got around to because you were busy selling your other ones? <laughs> so. Was there ever a kind of basket that you never, never got around to making? No, I guess I never thought about it. I never thought about that. <laughs> just, just doing, just doing what I had to work with, and just work, did that, did that. When you were doing a basket for a show, for a competition, what did you focus on? You had to. You had to really, really make it uh, smooth and smooth and as nice as you could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can make it, can make it as nice as you could, and 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 uh, sometimes. Some reed would be bigger than the other, a smaller reed, and you would try to match the sizes of it to make mm. it to make it smooth looking. Mm -hmm. and it would make it look better than than just using using any, any kind. That was with you the natural reed. Out, uh, you would pick out the mm -hmm. the same sizes. I try to pick out the same sizes mm -hmm. to use when you was entering something. You had to. You had to do that. I right. <laughs> um, so did you sell quite a bit out of, well, it's hard, probably hard to sell out of the home, probably hard for people to come out here, so mostly at shows, I guess. No, um, not too much. At, not too much at home, mm -hmm. usually. Usually what we had, we'd take to, sh to shops or to... Mm -hmm. Wait till the show was going mm -hmm. on. Cherokee Nation gift shop and mm -hmm. some of the other yeah. gift shops. Who who has one of your baskets that you're you're most proud they have your basket? I wish I could remember the names that went overseas. <laughs> Oh, oh, how fun. Mm -hmm. And 
him, I think Wilma Mankiewicz had several, mm. several, my, uh, I think she had some bases that I had, that I had uh, woven over. Oh. And, and, uh, she had some clay beads that I had made out of clay, like this one right here. Uh -huh. This is clay, clay. And, and I know Bobby Gale's got some. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief, former Chief Smith's wife. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was proud of that. Museums. Mu several museums. Mm -hmm. so when did when you uh, somebody would come along and buy a basket, it would go to some museum. Mm -hmm. I, know, I know one went to somewhere in in Texas, some kind of somewhere in um, in the museum back there. Mm. Did you have one go to the um, Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian? Mm. I don't. I don't think the. I don't think so, not there. When did you start to um, get the idea for weaving over, over vases? Um, just, just later on, after, after I started making baskets and uh -huh. I thought they look pretty and and you can could put real. You could put wet water in it and put real flowers on it if they they wanted to use it for a vase for right and, and people liked them they 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 bought them and and used to sell them and one one about that size would they would sell I sold some for about hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought that was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And did you, with your woven baskets, were you happy if they were used for something too, or, or did you think of them just mainly for, you know, a, a work of art to set on the table? Mm, or no, I didn't mind this. If they knew. They knew who it came from. I, mm -hmm. was, I, I didn't. I didn't mind how, how, they, how they used how they it. how they used it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when Lisa started learning to make baskets, um, how did you how did you handle that? Did I was just... proud. I was proud that somebody got interested in it and I uh -huh. was going to carry on and I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, um, she already knew about shows. Yeah, she... Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm proud of her. She's getting better than I am now. <laughs> <laughs> are there any grandkids that are interested too? or? Yeah, we... Lisa's girls, mm -hmm. they 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 know how to weave, but they just haven't got in get got, gotten into it that much. And mm -hmm. my sister, my other daughter, she can she she knows how to weave, but she's too busy. <laughs> <laughs> it takes time, doesn't yeah, it? It takes time. Yeah, they know how. How long would it take you to finish a basket? And to, for me, it it takes longer. But I'll I'll talk about Lisa. She can finish one in a, in a day. <laughs> she, take, she she stopped one in one day and she finished it next day. To me, it, to me, it takes longer than that. <laughs> Oh. I mean, for me, it takes uh -huh. longer than that. 
So when you were showing, did you only work on one basket at a time, or would you work on several at a time? Mm, just, just one. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would just use the reed that I had and show them how, how it was done. And, mm -hmm. and they would, if it was a small one, they could, we could finish it in a, in a while, in a little while. But, it was a bigger one, it would take longer than that. So, mm -hmm. so we usually just started with the small ones when, when we were demonstrating. Right, mm -hmm. right. So talking a little bit more, I guess, about your process, um, did you, how did you get, get your ideas for baskets? Would you sometimes kind of wake up in the morning and you might have, you might have an idea or You'd be, you know, out outside walking around, and you'd get an idea. How did you get your ideas? Yeah, usually when when you were when you when you were in bed, I think that's mostly when you would think <laughs> think about how you, how you could how you could make it look different or better or how you, how you, well, how you, what kind of decorations you could put on there and be thinking about that. And, and the hardest part was t thinking of the title. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so did you write things down when you were laying in bed or did you just keep it in your head? Well, I didn't write it down. I just. Uh, it in my head. And then the next day you'd go to work. Mm -hmm. Did you prefer working at during the day or did you like to kind of work later in the evening? Um, I worked during the day when I guess there was a, nothing much else I could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I could when I could work longer and when my hands were better, I, I used to work to weigh in the night sometimes. Mm -hmm. If you had a show coming up. Mm -hmm. If I had a show coming up, I'd <laughs> work extra hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how many baskets, I know it depends on size, but how many would you try to have at a show? We would try to have about a table, mm -hmm. table full, mm -hmm. full of baskets, and sometimes more than that. It, mm -hmm. but, but now we don't do so many. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I know you mentioned that a lot of times, even with like the buck brush or the honeysuckle you might buy the natural materials, but a few times you got them yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if it's gotten kind of harder as, as you know, the weather is changing and things are changing in the land. Is it, is it kind of getting harder to get those natural materials? It's getting scarce. It's getting scarce. Mm. Scarcer, I think, wouldn't you, Lisa? Yeah. Mm. You, you, you just uh, you just have to find a place or see a place where there might be some, and then mm -hmm. you would go mm -hmm. out there. And if it's on somebody's land, you have to get their permission. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their mm -hmm. permission to if, they, if it was all right to go out and get it. Right, right. How did you how did you um, sign your baskets? S sign. Or did you not? Was there any way of like a potter can put their you know they can put their name on the bottom of a pot, but no, I, I don't remember signing them. But mm -hmm. once in a while, somebody would ask if I could sign sign my name and at the bottom or 
Oh. So I'm like, yeah, I have to just use ink pen. Or something did like you that. like doing that, or did you feel yeah, like? Yeah, it was. Yeah, I didn't think nothing of it. I uh -huh. just did it. it was so the pictures hot. taken with them. We're happy to do it then mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. But the fine work was your signature, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really nice work. So, looking back over the time that you've made baskets when you were making and selling, was there a time, was there kind of a fork in the road where you thought to yourself, well, maybe I shouldn't really spend my time making these. Was there ever a fork in the road for you? Or did you always just know, I like making baskets and I'm going to do it? Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. I just like, I like doing it. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, I like doing it. Because mm -hmm. if there was other things, the usual things to be done, I'd, mm -hmm. have, I'd, I'd do that. But as much as I could, I, I was making baskets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just like to. And how about, what was one of the, did you have any low points when you were making baskets and selling baskets, when you got discouraged or? Um, you would get a little discouraged whenever, whenever you went to a show and, and there was a, too much business, not mm -hmm. very many, not very many people buying or just, mm -hmm. just a little, not very much, he didn't bother too much. <coughs> the next one would be better. Mm -hmm. You would plan on that. Um, is there anything that we, um, well, how about another high point? Another, you know, going back to Cherokee, North Carolina was a high point in a way, and it was a moving experience. Was there another high point in your career? Another moment oh. that stands out that you really, as special? Yeah, we met some older older el elder sir that was good good to talk to and oh. I've been making mat baskets for a long time and, and it was good visiting with them because they they talk they talk turkey but they sounded a little different than what the way we sound. Yeah. <laughs> had to pay had to pay Pretty close attention to to what they were saying before you understood them. It's a little different. It sounds a little different than uh -huh. the way we talk. Uh huh. It was just good going back because it was just. And you went twice, right? Once with the village. No. Yeah. Did you go twice? Yeah, we went, the first time is when we made that, raised that money to go, mm -hmm. and all of the village workers went, and the next time is that <coughs> we just went on our own. Mm. We went, we went, I think, three, three more times after that. And then every year in September we would go. That's when they would have their celebration up there. Okay. And okay. Just all different things going on, and that's when we would go in October and, <coughs> and just and it was just enjoyable to be there. Yeah. The mountains. I love the mountains. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So that became an annual thing mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we've forgotten to talk about that you'd like to add before we look at your basket? Well, I, I don't know. I'm 
probably be saying that. I'm just saying I wish I had told her this. I wish I had told her that later on. <laughs> but, but I can't think of anything right now. It seems like everything is pretty much covered up. Co covered. Covered, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't talked about um, your uh, designation as a, as a living treasure by Cherokee Nation. How did you first find out that that was? Mm. There was a fellow worker in that village. <laughs> he, he was a, he was the canoe maker in the village. <laughs> And he had only had one arm. Something mm. happened to him when he was younger. And he, <coughs> and he, and he suggested. I mean, he told me that I'm gonna nominate you for for the national treasures. And he started from him. He he he, oh, okay. he, he put my. He went and. Gave them a name and 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 it's when I when, when I got it. That was in '96, I think. In '96, and it was the program very old. Had it been in existence very long? It not 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 too long. Not very mm -hmm. long, and some. Well, I heard somebody that, from somebody that Wilma Mankiller was, had thought of that idea. Oh, okay. And I, I, I heard, I heard it, but I don't really know for, for sure. Right. So when you were, when you were given that award, um, was there a dinner? Did they, and how did they, um, how did they? Um, Celebrate that. Mm -hmm. They would, uh, they would announce it when it was going to be, mm -hmm. and they, and a lot of people would come to the, to, would come to it. Mm -hmm. A banquet. A banquet. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah a banquet. And then the museum probably has at least a couple of your baskets, yeah. right? Okay. Cherokee National Museum. I think so. I, I, I don't know how many how many places has my baskets, but I know they're here and there. I don't mm -hmm. know just, just where they are. Right. <laughs> Well, they've gone all over the world, like you said. <laughs> she got her award with Tommy Lee Jones. He got an award at the same time. Okay. They were together oh, that's, at this banquet. That's neat. That's mm -hmm. neat. All right. Well, um, we're going to take a look at your basket a little more closely, which is here on the couch. and. Just beautiful. Okay, so um, Nina, you want to tell us about this basket? Um, it's the one that you've kept, I guess. Here, is it yours? Is it one that you kept all these years, or no? Th this uh, this is mine. <laughs> Okay, okay. This is one of Lisa's. Uh, one okay. Of Lisa's. No, she made it. She gave it to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, as a gift. I, I, That's how you kept it. You gave uh -huh. it away. Uh -huh. Yeah. And when we get interviewed, we use that because I don't have any, <laughs> any in my house. Well, it's beautiful. So, so in the dyes that you talked about, is there some walnut there and some um, blood I root? Think, I think that brown is walnut and the orange is blood root. Mm -hmm.
can you talk a little bit about the the top uh, of the basket? We made those that knob where, where it would be easier to pick up if they pick up the lid if they want it to look inside to see what it looks mm -hmm. like and or if they want it to store something in it they can they can do that and 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 you can make some lids that don't have those knobs on there too, but mm -hmm. they they would be harder to pick pick up than mm -hmm. they yeah would be flat. Yeah, that's a beautiful um, top or knob because I've seen them where they are they're hard to pick up, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's just big enough and the shape and everything is. Is this one of the ones where you were thinking about it one night, you sort of knew what the design sort of came to you? Mm. I, I guess. <laughs> you don't remember? <laughs> I don't remember, and the, the, the idea of putting those, the Acorns and decorating it a little bit mm -hmm. uh, came to came to me later and just started doing that and and I and I would make little little bitty corns out of out of this uh, oh, small reed yeah and then I would decorate the basket knob with the and put the little corn around it too oh how delicate and then were you did you dye some of the did it have color in the corn, or was it just mostly, the natural color? Uh, yeah, yellow, mostly yellow, mm -hmm. and 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 the dark and the dark, almost like purple. It looked like strawberries, strawberries mm. on there, but they, they were corn, and uh huh. They called it some kind of corn. I forget what what they were called. Mm -hmm. Round, almost round berries. Uh huh. And and talk about the acorns a bit. You polish them, don't you? I mean, they're real shiny. Mm -hmm. They're prettier than the ones I pick up. What did I, what did I do with them? I think. I think just uh, wet, wet cloth or something like okay. that. Okay. Uh, cleaning them real good. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. Yeah, well, it's it's just beautiful. Um, and Lisa, you mentioned there even there was a way that Lena sort of signed her baskets in a sense. Mm -hmm. She would. Um, uh, people would want the signature, so the only way we knew of was to uh, have a picture with her in the basket, proving that she is the one that made the basket. Right. Mm -hmm. And the colors on this basket is what she called Cherokee colors. That's nice to know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that particular combination. Mm -hmm. And I don't know as we've really talked about even maybe um, a design that was kind of your favorite design or did it just change from basket to basket. Your chains. Your chains. I don't remember. At the top, the chain. That's yours. Uh, on, the, on the design on the... The basket. On the basket. Not the lid, the basket. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see it. The one on the top there. And that's one of your mom's trademark mm -hmm. designs. Yeah, that's that's just really neat. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank, thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I, I, I don't, I have trouble talking. I don't, I don't really know how to talk. <laughs> oh no, you were, you were just great.